just wait until we can find another ship or something to contact. What is your role here? I'm mid-level. Mm -hmm. And what is that entitling? I don't go out and I, I'm past the point of going out and fighting battles. Mm -hmm. But I'm good with technology. Mm -hmm. So I go out and I gather that sort of thing. Ah. Or if they are somewhere and they need technological reading or something. Yes. Then I go and I do that. Mm -hmm. And how is that done? How do you? How are you able to do that? I, I just know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm able to communicate with machines. Mm -hmm. Um, How is that communication? Is it telepathically or? It's it's like telepathy. It's just I know I can be in front of any machine mm -hmm. and I know the exact thing that needs to be taken, yes. clicked or whatever mm -hmm. in order for me to get the information out of it. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So let's focus more on to this day. You're mm -hmm. back at the command center. Mm -hmm. There's been a loss of your people. Mm -hmm. So what happens next? The, the commander people are, are pissed. Mm -hmm. um, now they have to tell the families. Mm -hmm. But they usually send out the younger ones. Yes. So that they don't have necessarily kids yet. Mm-hmm. Um, the family dynamic feels really important. Mm -hmm. um, keeping units together. Yes. The family unit, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you think you can do or you should do from here on? Do you get orders from someone? Or? Mm. It feels like I'm tired of taking orders because they don't listen to me. Mm hmm. Is this happening a lot to you? It's happened a few times, yeah. Mm -hmm. More than a few times. Mm -hmm. And do you have like a commander or someone that you need to report to? I don't somehow. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm a part of a different division. It's like I'm the head of my division. Yes. But there are other divisions that are seen as being higher than me. Mm -hmm. And so... They kind of, they come up with the plan of what they're going to do next. And then I just do the technology gathering reading portion. Very good. Very good. So in this situation, what do you think is going to happen next? It feels like we have to wait. But there's another planet at risk. There's an entire planet of beings, of human beings that is at risk. Oh, in what way? They're trying to go after them. Okay. And the whole purpose of this was for us to find where the reptilians were going, like where their base was, mm -hmm. so that we could stop them or take their technology or do something yeah. to stop them from further interfering with these humans. Mm -hmm. When I say humans, they're different than what you consider humans. Oh, in what way? Um, they're much taller. Okay. They're, it's not an earth planet. Mm -hmm. It is different. Hmm. How would it be different? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, they have more love in their hearts. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what else do you know about those humans? I want to um, like and mix with them, mm -hmm. take some of their DNA for experimentations and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if able to get into their DNA pool, then that's just a scientific disaster. It's going to take so long for us to reverse those effects. Mm -hmm. And we do not go directly down to the humans because um, they're not ready for that. That would just shock them. Mm -hmm. Don't go down in their form either. They show up as like they're like them. And so they do all of their stuff on a more secretive level. 
So when they show up like them, are you talking about shape shifting? Yes. Yeah. So they're, yeah. Yeah. They don't have the same like super advanced technology that we have, but they have some molecular technology where they can shift their physical being into looking like these yes. humans. Mm -hmm. And so tell me, what do you know about this Earth-like planet and the people over there? What's happening there that you need to go and intervene? They're pure. They are, I mean, from a sense. They are, um, they're a new life yes. that we helped create, that we helped foster the creation of or mm -hmm. foster the development of. And so this is all um, an experiment for us that we're watching them. Yes. And these want to come in and just like mix with them and mess up our experiment. Like it took us so long to get these people where they're at right now. Hmm. It took us so long. We had to try multiple different brands, multiple different combinations of genes. Hmm. And we finally found the perfect place. Mm -hmm. So this planet is like your baby in a way. Totally. Mm -hmm. And there's other uh, groups of beings like us that not like that look like me, but other ones that um, have all been a part of this. We're all doing it together. Mm -hmm. Very good. Like a project. Totally. Mm -hmm. Very good. And the project has it been successful? You say it's totally it's coming successful. good. This mm -hmm. is the first time that we haven't had to destroy it. So how did the, that evolution took place? Tell me a little bit more about that and how are you helping? We tried. Um, different gene manipulation, mm -hmm. um, mixing some of our genes with some animal genes, mixing all different types of, mm -hmm. all different types of things because we didn't know what we were going to get. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing was done against will, mm -hmm. which I'm not in the gene program, so I'm not totally sure how that was done. Mm -hmm. I just know that that's what they did and I'm kind of tasked with helping to protect it mm -hmm. because it was all done like a long time ago. Through millennia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that they are as developed as they are now is taken a very, very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And what kind of abilities and lifestyle do those humans have now? Um, they're fairly telepathic. Um, they understand emotion. They read more based on the emotions of the people around mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I am not sure if they are aware that they're reading emotion. I yes. think it's done on a subconscious level. Um, they're just experiencing life. Mm -hmm. They're not concerned with what's happening off the planet because they don't even know that anything really exists off the planet. Mm -hmm. Do you interact with them at all? Uh, sometimes some people go down there and just kind of mess with them. Mm -hmm. In what way? <laughs> uh, like show themselves in the sky or, you know. Okay. <laughs> so funny. They freak out whenever it happens. Oh, they do? Yeah, and everyone, everyone here talks about it. Like, oh, we went down. Mm -hmm. Everyone was freaking out. It was really funny. Very good. And what about the, the way of life? Do they have uh, homes? and Totally have homes. Very mm -hmm. slow-paced life. Mm -hmm. Just simple. Very simple. Are there homes like yours? or they No, they're um, more... Mm. I'm not sure what their homes look like. Their homes are homes are not circular they're not um they're very nature-based mm -hmm. very good so everything is built from nature-based they don't use alchemy like we use alchemy oh, i see and yet though how are those beings nourishing their bodies they eat the plants mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. um sometimes they do eat animals though mm -hmm which that's because of some of the DNA that was used to mix with them. Mm -hmm. um, some of the animal DNA 
mm -hmm. non advanced being DNA that originally ate animal mm -hmm. because those molecules are in their body, they still crave some the meat. Meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. And so you're not part of the gene pool here. You're not. It's not your. Uh, I think that some of I don't I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they have any of our DNA. Maybe some, but it's not. You can't tell on a physical appearance. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, is there a need to protect those twelve humans? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's what all of the groups of beings. There's so not so many. There's a number of different being groups yes. that created them or fostered the creation or was part of the planning or mm -hmm. you know some of us heard about it and we just wanted to get in on it mm -hmm. or just let us observe type of thing mm -hmm. and we see how beautiful it is and how loving it is and then we have these jerks who are just trying to come in and and ruin it mm -hmm. and so we're all working together now to prevent the pollution on the planet from the, in the dna ah. yeah and, and it's um their cloaking mm -hmm. into human mm -hmm. has gotten so good that it can be difficult for us to tell real human from cloaker oh, wow. her teeth give it away though sometimes mm -hmm. <laughs> nasty ass teeth and did you ever had to go and intervene? And I, I haven't. You haven't. Mm -hmm. The other ones. The other ones haven't. Very good. So what happens now? What do you think you should do, or your people, in regards with the humans on this planet? I think that we should give them technology to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. But that involves disclosure of us to them. Yes. And we can't make that decision on ourselves. It has to be decided by the council, mm -hmm. the council of all the beings, groups mm -hmm. who created them and have fostered this. And is that council on your planet or? It's um, it, it's in a neutral space. Mm -hmm. So everyone goes to this neutral space from their planet or their ship, depending on where they live. And some of them don't even live on planets. They live in, um, it's like bubbles of energy. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. So what do you do now, you and your people? We wait for the council to decide what level of interaction we can have with the humans. Mm -hmm. Because until we find something else that's left behind, yes. the humans are just sitting ducks. Ah. And so it's either we wait until we find something and you know hope that we find something or we go to the humans and give them something to protect themselves mm -hmm. but the big concern is that us because i feel like what's going to happen is two of my type people are going to go down there mm -hmm. one or two and then they are going to be worshipped as gods which is not the point mm -hmm. we do not cloak ourselves we feel that is dishonest mm -hmm. and if a human hears another human try and talk about some off-planet thing that's coming to get them they're not actually going to believe it they have to know that it's coming from another off-planet thing mm -hmm. so they have to see us in our form yes. in order to believe and to understand and to know and that way they can feel our energy more purely so they know that we're coming from love mm -hmm. fascinating very good mm -hmm. i kind of feel like i might be going though because this has to do with technology. Okay, so let's find out. Let's leave this scene behind. Okay. Is there anything else before we move away? Is there anything else important here? No. Wonderful. So let's leave this scene behind mm -hmm. and let's move forward to another important day in the same life. And now we're there. Tell me what's happening today. Um, we're going down to the planet. Mm -hmm. How is that done? On our ship. Um, you mean the human planet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They decided that we were able to 
council decided that we were able to. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of us from different gangs that we're still not who's getting off the ship. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Is this a big ship that you're in right now? It's bigger than my pod. Okay. It's it's like mm, I don't know, how many times this day? Mm -hmm. So what do you think your role is gonna be? First, they want to gauge how the humans respond. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to take a little bit for for me. I, I honestly don't think there was much point in me coming down at this stage. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go check out the planet where the humans are not and see what the capabilities are of the planet. Mm -hmm. So while they go with the humans, me and this one other person are going to um, just kind of check things out. Mm -hmm. And why do you? think the capabilities are like what's that all about what materials do they have mm. because their mental power is not so good mm -hmm. so we need to get them materials so we have to know what do they need on their planet in order to defend themselves mm -hmm. how are they going to defend themselves oh okay so now we're thinking that if we're able to channel the energy from inside the planet, that they might be able to create a shield around them or something. Mm -hmm. um, create a grid around the planet. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to create these anchor points to channel the energy from the planet, to mm -hmm. create a grid around the planet. And how do you go about that? How do you know the anchor points? Um, just they make connection with the with the planet. We have to attune ourselves with the planet, mm -hmm. um, which feels a little bit taxing. Why? Because it's so much heavier here. Oh. Um, so we can't. It's like bit by bit by bit. It takes a while to do these things. Why do you think it's heavier? It's like. The world just feels full, like kind of like it weighs you down. Like my energy doesn't flow as fast and vibrantly as it does mm -hmm. in my own space. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is different from your home? What's affecting this heaviness on the planet? I think it's the materials that this planet is crafted with. Mm -hmm. And also, it has a lot to do with the consciousness of the beings on the planet. Okay, fascinating. Very good. So what do you do next? So we're finding these anchor points. We brought a pod down mm -hmm. this time. This is our multiple. We've come down here multiple times now. Mm -hmm. And so we are placing energetic markers at various points around the planet of where things need to be done. Yes. And next, the next phase of this is um, we're working with the people mm -hmm. to create the things. Mm -hmm. It feels like they need to be involved somehow. Mm -hmm. One, it needs to be in their consciousness in order for this grid to hold. Mm -hmm. But they can't do this alone because they can't, they can't build massive pyramids by themselves. And how are you helping them? We help them with um, giving them the technology, bringing them the technology. So we train some of their people mm -hmm. on how to use mental energy more effectively. Mm -hmm. And then when you combine them with these tools that we gave them, yes. they're able to help build these things with us. We don't actually need their help, but we include them. Yes. Um, We want them to feel more connected with us, not that we are some high and mighty, mm -hmm. but the people themselves, some of them are trying to make access to us limited. Mm -hmm. So like only some of them have access and we correct this continually. No, 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 no. Everyone can have access to us. We're here for a job, but we are not above. Mm -hmm. We're here to assist. Mm -hmm. 
we don't want them to know that they are an experiment. They cannot know that they were an experiment. Mm -hmm. How do you think that's going to affect them? That would devalue them. Mm -hmm. At this level of consciousness, they can't understand it. Mm -hmm. They would... It would be devalued. Mm -hmm. And how did they first react when your people, when you show oh, yourself? They freaked out. They got on their hands and knees. They were bowing. It was exactly what we expected. Mm -hmm. um, we don't speak. Mm -hmm. We can only communicate telepathically. So it was, you know, when those do not be afraid, we are not above, those types of communication, mm -hmm. nothing verbal, just That's sending it out through our heart space, mm -hmm. essentially. And were you able to give the same form of your body, the same shape? Yeah, somehow. Mm -hmm. Somehow, but we can't stay too long now. Why not? Because of the density. How do you think that's going to affect your body? I think it's going to age me. It age me, not age me, but I'm going to need some rejuvenation when I go back home. So were you able to find those energy points to build yes. a bridge? Yes, yeah, we got the energy points. Um, How were you able to do that? Um, working with the planet. Mm -hmm. You mean the consciousness of the planet? Yeah, yeah, the consciousness of the planet. And it was kind of like once we set the first point, the first point took a while for us to establish. Uh -huh. But once we set that initial point, it was kind of like ding, 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 ding. Like everything kind of started happening easily. Okay. I mean, it takes time, but mm -hmm. you find one anchor point and the other ones want to be found. Mm -hmm. Very good. So this grid, it's formed by the mind, your mind, mm -hmm. human minds, and also the technologies. Right? The technologies. <clears throat> and I think that we place something in the ground as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or we build certain structures around the energy points that amplify the energy points. How are those structures like? Some of them are pyramids. Pyramids. Mm -hmm. Like you have on Earth. Mm -hmm. um, those are, you know the classic, most effective, basic ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and they and they stand the test of time clearly, which you have seen as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we do, we've done a lot of those. Those have been, those have been good. Mm -hmm. But we also do, I'm not sure what these other structures are, but we, we built some other types of structures as well. Mm -hmm. And how, tell me more about how this grid is going to be formed from here on. It's going to be important. So we're training the people. Um, but it has to be high vibrational people, mm -hmm. which most of them are. But some in the society are more um, aware than others. So we, and we can't train everyone at the same time. Mm -hmm. We can't just project everything <coughs> into everyone's brain at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we work with certain people and we tell them how to activate these grids, how to maintain these grids. Mm -hmm. And they have a duty now, if they want to protect their planet, to go around and um, reinforce these grids. We know that they're not going to. Mm -hmm. We know this. But we remind them every once in a while that check your grids, mm -hmm. fix your grids. And how can they do that if you were to explain it very simple? They can feel a shift when the consciousness begins to drop on the planet. Yes. That's the sign that the grids are ah. in need. And what do they need to do in order to put the grid back up? They go to those physical sites, going to the physical sites. You have to at least be on one, and then maybe you can affect the ones around it. Mm -hmm. But... Um, you have to be at one grid mm -hmm. and then you project your loving consciousness and you connect deeply with the earth. You go to the core mm -hmm. of the planet mm -hmm. and you pull up that pure energy source, connect it with yourself, amplify it through your heart. Mm -hmm. You pull it down from the, from the center sun mm -hmm. and you, 
it activates. Fascinating. But you have to go to multiple points because you can't just go to one and it's not going to activate everything. It's going to help, mm -hmm. but there needs to be people at at least specific points all across the planet. Otherwise, if you don't get these main points, it's going to, you're going to have weak spots. Very good. And that's what's going to happen in the future. There's going to be weak spots. Mm -hmm. And let's fast forward a little bit mm -hmm. until you're close or almost done with the grid and tell me how's that like on the planet mm -hmm. um, we've had some interruptions um, feels like the know what we're doing and they're trying to figure out how to counteract this technology now mm -hmm. and we can only do so much yes it's up a lot to these humans mm -hmm to maintain it. Mm -hmm. But it feels like they're also getting shorter, the humans. Mm. What do you think causes that? I'm not sure. Mm. I, don't, I'm, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Do you sense any changes in their lifestyle or on the planet? They're becoming... Um, almost more compact. I don't really know how else to describe it. In the bodies, you mean? Yeah, in the bodies, but also in their physical spaces. Hmm. What do you think causes this? Um, needs. Needs, 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 needs is just what I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hearing. What kind of needs? Like physical or? Physical needs or um, almost starting to trust the planet a little bit less it's like amazing we're doing this incredible work with them we're connecting them so much with the grid we're creating this grid but at the same time somehow they're becoming more disconnected with the planet mm -hmm. i think it's because the people that we taught about how to maintain the grids aren't sharing that knowledge with the people mm -hmm. and so they're kind of hoarding that in themselves mm -hmm. <clears throat> Instead of sharing it with others. Yeah, and so the other people are starting to lose a little bit more consciousness. Mm -hmm. Slowly. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Anything else here that you want to tell me about? No, I mean, I can, I can see, I can see that some, you know, they're going to have some issues. But again, like I said, there's, we can only do so much. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Yeah. So let's leave this scene behind and let's move forward to another important day so we can understand a little bit more about your mission and what happened with the human planet. Now you were there. And tell me, what do you know? What comes to mind? Where are you? I'm just back at my home. Mm -hmm. What's happening here? Now we're observing from afar again. We're interacting with them less. Mm -hmm. Um, what changes? They were getting too greedy with their knowledge. Mm -hmm. The humans, you the mean? The humans, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but we left clues for the lay people to find. Yes. Um, there was such cognitive dissonance by the time that we left mm -hmm. that the lay people couldn't like believe us or something like they couldn't even recognize us they couldn't even see us mm -hmm. and so it was kind of like they have their free will that's something that was given to yeah. them and coded within them so mm -hmm. we've done all that we can by creating this grid and now we just leave all right good and do you think the grid is going to hold from here on or? it totally depends on the people <clears throat> And it seems like, I mean, there's discussions of how frequently can someone go down and give little signals to them, like, there's something else out there, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Because that might trigger something in their consciousness, because all of them now have it in their DNA mm. that we were there. <clears throat> I see. So if we can give them little hints that there's more out there, and it's not just all legend, mm -hmm. that should trigger consciousness development very good very good mm -hmm. so it's up to them if they're going to be able to hold the grid or not 100%. <clears throat> very good and what happens here today in your home 
Just with my family. Mm-hmm. How are they doing? They're good. My kids are older. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if either of them live at home anymore. Mm-hmm. What about your wife? My wife is still here. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. And what's happening this day? I just... I think we have grandkids now, actually. Grandkids. Mm-hmm. I don't know why that doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Grandkids doesn't feel right. <laughs> um, we're just... By, we're in the same place, hanging out by these water pools. Mm-hmm. Very good. And what about your job? I don't. I I consult with them. Mm-hmm. I still observe some, but I don't do what I used to do. Mm-hmm. Did you retire or like retire? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what happens to you after you normally retire? How is your life? totally peaceful and relaxing Mm -hmm. fascinating i still love doing the research and i still have access to all the areas of knowledge so Mm -hmm. i spend a lot of time going there and just reading and hearing about the latest discoveries watching the projections of the latest discoveries and sometimes i'll still go out on little trips to different places with people and kind of show them how I would do things like you know there's kind of like little training opportunities here and there mm-hmm. um but I just live a life that's totally peaceful fascinating mm-hmm. are you still your people I are, are you still in touch with the humans on the planet less so mm-hmm. yeah they um they dropped in consciousness mm-hmm and so we're kind of letting them go through their cycle. Mm-hmm. And then if I'm still around, I don't, I don't know, mm-hmm. um, people may return, you know, just still give them those little snapshots. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> were the friends ever? Uh, they got on. They got on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were able to pierce to the veil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. Very good. So there's a lot of, you know, tumultuous things happening on the planet, but it's not, I mean, it's not, hope is not lost. Mm-hmm. They still have good. Yes. But there are some significant um, cloaked that are there. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah. So you're just watching, you're not interfering. Right. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Right. Very good. Anything else that you want to tell me about your life? No, I feel at peace. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. Let's leave that scene behind. Mm -hmm. Drift and float away. And now we have gone forward to the last day of your life. In this lifetime, we're watching the last day. What's happening? What do you see? I decide. I decide when I go. Mm -hmm. And how's that like? I just feel complete. Mm -hmm. Uh, My wife went before me. Um, I was still having a lot of fun with my research and Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to stay a bit longer because we know that when you phase out, yes, you do literally just phase out Mm -hmm. and you go to have another experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to have a little bit more experience in this body and observe the humans a little bit more, research a little bit more, but now I'm kind of feeling like I'm ready just to see, to relax a little bit more yes. and then see where I go next. Very good. So now whatever happens has already happened mm-hmm. and you're on the other side of it, out of that part in spirit form. From this perspective, you can easily look back at that entire life. Every life has lessons and a purpose. Yeah. What lessons have you learned? Trust the instincts. Mm-hmm. Um, trust the instincts for... I get those hits for a reason. Mm-hmm. And don't second guess them. Mm-hmm. Even if everyone else disagrees with you. Even if people laugh or discount you or think that you're 
naive or anything. Mm -hmm. And I think the lesson that I learned for the importance of connection to your planet, Mm -hmm. the restoration that I mentioned, that's just by being on my planet again, just by being on my planet and I'm, am I restored? Mm. I don't have to go in a machine or anything. It's just feeling my body on my planet. Mm -hmm. So the connection is important. That's key. Mm. Everything relates back to that. The planet survives on you. You survive on the planet. It's just shared consciousness. Mm -hmm. You're an aspect of that consciousness. Mm -hmm. When you disconnect from yourself, that's when you begin to wither. Okay. Very good. What else did you learn? Uh, <laughs> family. Mm, tell me more. Just how nourishing it can be. Mm-hmm. How good it can be. Mm-hmm. What did you learn from your family in this life? Acceptance. They didn't disagree. I mean, I mean, my wife didn't always agree with what I was doing. Mm-hmm. She let me do it. Yes. And supported me. Very good. Mm-hmm. And now that you look back, um, is there anything that you wish you could have done different or learn more of? No, those extra, the extra time that I spent doing the extra research was specifically so that I wouldn't have that type of regret. I see. Very good. Mm-hmm. And what was the purpose of this life altogether? Mm. To experience the inner workings of the universe, mm. knowing the history of humanity mm-hmm. for future lives. Mm-hmm. How did that go? What did you learn from that about this chapter? Learning how they came to be, mm-hmm. how they can maintain themselves, how they can protect themselves. Mm-hmm how to recognize infiltrators, cloaked beings. Yes. This life was about my knowledge gathering in a sense. Mm-hmm. Knowledge gathering, but then also setting the foundation for the grid mm-hmm. on the human planet. Mm-hmm. That was really, really, really big. Mm-hmm. How do you think you did? I think I did pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Very I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. What else do you want to man- mention from this perspective as you look back at that life? My family was, um, like I said, it was the nourishment that kind of, I, I could have been fine on my own, but mm-hmm. having the family allowed me to go deeper mm-hmm. into the work that I was doing. Mm-hmm. So it helped you? It totally helped me. Um, It was just so nice to feel that love (laughs) and to be able to share in it because my wife always wanted to hear about it. You know, (laughs) some things might have scared, but she just loved hearing about it. So just talking about the things that I experienced and it was good. Very good. And what do you think now about the humans on that planet? Um, Work to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I'm going down there at some point mm-hmm. because I know that I know how to activate those grids mm-hmm. and um, that's one key element to them getting back to where they used to be their technology may have been more primitive back then mm-hmm. but their consciousness was so much more pure Yes, and so now it's a matter of having the advanced technologies which there are so much more mm-hmm. than they know than the mass vast majority of them know Mm -hmm. but then bringing the consciousness back to the level but a lot of that has to do with getting my hands off Mm -hmm. and what's the state of that right now as you look back i mean there's still more Mm -hmm. yeah and the yeah there's still more Mm -hmm. and the humans are they evolving are they changing what do you see from your perspective um they're evolving, but with the influence of the energy on the planet, mm-hmm. they're evolving, but also devolving mm-hmm. in a sense. 
Um, so their consciousness is devolving. There's so much doubt and hate. Mm -hmm. That does not come from us. That comes from them. And how is that projecting onto the humans, you think? How is that getting onto the humans? Yeah. The lower consciousness. It's in the field. Mm -hmm. It's um, all different types of projection of that energy. Mm -hmm. Comes from everything from writings to pictures, um, sounds. Mm -hmm. And what do you think the humans can do more of in order to evolve? Return back to Earth. Mm -hmm. Return back to your planet. Mm -hmm. You mean connection with the planet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, connect down and connect up. Mm -hmm. And just connect with, feel love, that's it. Feel love. However they can feel love, whether that's with another person, whether that is with earth, whether that's by connecting with above, whatever they perceive as being above them. Yes. Any way they can feel love. That's, that's what matters right now. That's the only thing that matters. So if, let's say, majority of humans will feel love, what yeah. will be the Oh, my God. I'll be able to be on the planet because the consciousness, the vibration of the planet would, like, disintegrate them, essentially. Mm -hmm. Eject them. That's mm -hmm. what I want to say. Eject. Mm -hmm. It's just about increasing the love quotient. Mm -hmm. No fighting. You can't fight anything. Mm -hmm. you can love something mm -hmm. because fighting is only going to cause more friction and we don't want friction we need the peace very good very good mm -hmm. is there anything else that you want to tell me about that life like